Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Siriana Tarot. This is going to be a reading for the collective for all signs for January 27th, 2020. Um, today I am going to be traveling back to my other home um, in the United States. Um, I'm going to um, have all of your readings for the new moon in Aquarius up hopefully um, by today if they weren't all up yesterday. So I do appreciate you guys um, with, for your patience with me uploading that. My upload speeds should be back to normal now that I'm traveling back to the U.S. Um, and just be sure to check out your sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs um, for those new moon and Aquarius readings. And as you guys know, we have Mercury retrograde coming up, and we also have our full moon in Leo as sort of our next sort of big energy shift. So I hope you guys are all, um, all dealing well. And um, I hope 2020 is treating you guys superbly. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this reading. Um, it's a message for the collective for all signs for January 27th, 2020. A message for the collective for all signs, January 2020. So we're going to ask angels, ancestors, our loved ones who have passed, spirit guides and spirit for the messages we need to hear for January 27th. 2020. I'm just going to ask that while I'm doing this reading, you go ahead and give it a thumbs up, hit that subscription button, comment, share, and ring that bell if you want to get notifications when I upload anything new. Okay, we've got the Ten of Wands in reverse, the Prince of Swords in reverse. The Ace of Cups and the Ten of Swords. Wow, wow. Lots of endings and beginnings in this reading. But let's go ahead. Before we do anything, we're going to take a look at the overall energy for this reading. It is the Four of Wands. I love this. For some of you guys, this is dealing with a marriage or a soulmate or a, a twin flame relationship. Um, my four, four of Wands is my 1111 card, and as some of you guys may know, it, um, it is an awakening code. It means different things for different people, but I feel like some of you have definitely been noticing, you know, 1111 on the clock, um, maybe on license plates and in different places. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear those chicks chirping in the background. Oh, I'm going to miss them so much. Our next couple of readings, we won't have those for the next couple of months. Um, but, you know, it is, you know, chicks are all about, you know, they've just hatched there, you know, there's something that's birthing. And there's also something that really wants to get your attention, you know, spirit saying, you know, feed me, feed me, feed me, you know, and I get that with this 1111 card or this four of wands. It's all about being appreciative of what you have, but then also paying attention and seeing the beauty and being optimistic and being thankful for all the blessings that are around you. And don't let your analytical mind get in the way of not, of not seeing seeing those things because sometimes we have a tendency to focus on the things that we don't have, right? But this four of wands is all about your stability. This woman is very perfectly poised. Her heart chakra is open, you know, her solar plexus chakra is operating very strong. You know, even her, um, you know, her sacral chakra, you know, where her intimacy and her creativity is, is all really, really sort of open, strong, comfortable, vulnerable. You know, and so I really, really like this energy. So again, for some of you, that's the energies that you need to step into or you are stepping into at this time. All right, underneath that, we have the Seven of Cups. And the Seven of Cups is all about confusion. It's all about a little bit of needing introspection. Um, but this Seven of Cups is a little bit different because this person, you know, is really, really upset about a previous relationship. So for some of you, um, it's sort of going to indicate, um, you know, in this ending, there's a brand new beginning. Again, I apologize about the noises. Um, I also have the fan on. I, I just apologize. I don't want to start this reading over because it just looks, it's so beautiful. But if you see in the Seven of Cups, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces energy, he's really lamenting, he's frustrated, he's really angry, some sort of something he feels like he might have wasted time on or that he lost um, or that he didn't pay enough attention to or he made the wrong choice. Um, but I do get like a sense of grief in this card. It's not necessarily a traditional reading, but this deck is not really that traditional either. Um, and, you know, I feel like he's really, you know, he just is like, you know, he's going crazy about being a little bit stuck in the past. And with this card, 
card in reverse, the Seven of Cups, it takes me back to the Six of Cups, which is another soulmate card. And it's kind of being stuck in the past um, and the need to let that go. All right, here we have another 10 coming out. No, I'm sorry, it's not a 10, it's a 2. I'm blind as a bat, apparently. Um, the 2 of Wands is, I was thinking, it was like, can we have 3 10? <laughs> sorry, I apologize. Um, the 2 of Wands in reverse takes us back to the Ace of Wands about these new beginnings. Um, but it's also real time to, you know, it's like when you're planning and trying to make a decision. And Spirit is kind of saying, not right now might not be the time to make a decision. You have to go back to, you know, what is it that makes you happy? What is it that drives you? Where is your your passion and here we have the queen of cups using your intuition sitting very comfortably in your emotions being very emotionally balanced and then also this cup you know is everything that she cares about and you know taking care of yourself and your tribe and your home and your job and the everyday things while you're on this journey and I love it because then we have the three of pentacles under there which is uh, Taurus Virgo Capricorn energy and it's all about giving this situation or yourself the works and reminding you that you are the architect of your dreams and of your life so you you have the ability to change wherever you are and whatever you're doing okay to an extent <clears throat> But you can change all of it. It just, you know, there might, you might have to, you might not be able to all do it all overnight, if you understand what I'm saying. So the first card out here, we have the Ten of Wands in reverse. This is Tor, uh, sorry, Aries Leo Sag energy. And this energy is really interesting because it's all about you having taken on a lot of responsibilities. And either you choose to walk away from it, there's too much clutter, too much responsibility. I don't know why I've started shuffling these cards already. Um, too much responsibility, too much weight on your shoulders, and something really just had to end. Now, it could be a relationship, it could be a job, it could be a behavior pattern. You know, it could be that you've decided you're going to make healthier choices, that you can't go on, you know, eating the foods you were eating, drinking the drinks you were drinking, you know, maybe it's, you know, smoking, whatever, unhealthy lifestyle habits. Okay, or it could be overthinking, it could be using social media, it could be not exercising, but whatever it was, it became too much and you walked away from it or you decided it's time to release this burden. Now, as we've entered into Aquarius season, Aquarius is the sign of detachment. It's the sign of being innovative. So it's again, I feel like, you know, this is the perfect time for you guys to set your New Year's resolutions and with this new moon, and we still have, you know, we have like three days before and three days after the new moon to really set those intentions and release what no longer serves you. Be innovative and be creative. Get yourself, if there's a rut, that you've been in, you know, make those changes that you need to make because now's the time when they're really going to cement, okay, those changes for the good. We have the Prince of Swords in reverse. This is Libra, Gemini, Aquarius energy. Um, and the Prince of Swords in reverse is an energy I don't always like to see because it does represent some sort of dogma. Um, it represents somebody who's doing something and they're not really sure why they're doing it. Um, maybe they know what they want, but they can't seem to cut through the confusion um, and the noise. They can't seem to communicate what it is they need. Um, running up against a lot of roadblocks, you know, lots of miscommunications. We do have Mercury in retrograde coming up. We'll be entering in the shadow period pretty soon, but not yet. So it's something to really pay attention. Um, but it could also be, it could also involve this release. I mean, you could be releasing a person, you know, that was just maybe a little bit too cold, a little bit mean, slightly abusive verbally and or physically, um, or somebody who just couldn't communicate their needs properly or, or meet you halfway and find some sort of balance or some sort of compromise. And it could be that that's what you were releasing. It could be a love relationship. It could be a work relationship, a friendship, or what have you. <clears throat> Okay, or it could be a part of yourself. But what's beautiful here is we have the Ace of Cups. We have a brand new beginning. So for some of you, it's like you're releasing someone or something that no longer serves you, and the Spirit is offering you a brand new blessing. Now remember at this time, you know, Uranus is going to be really important, and Uranus is a time of, um, you know, of um, unexpected things happening to us. And so I feel like, you know, you might have felt like all is lost, and it's, you know, there's nothing you can do maybe feeling a little bit down and this Prince of Swords energy really sort of having you in your head and this anxiety about it. But Spirit is going to grant you a blessing and this is a blessing in love or something that you're very emotionally attached to. 
Remember, we can love our jobs, we can love our pets, we can love our hobbies, we can love our art that we make, you know, our exercise routines. You know, love means a lot of different things for a lot of us, and for some of us, it will definitely be a romantic love. And I see that with the next card coming out, the Ten of Swords, more Libra, Gemini, Aquarius energy. This coming out, meaning... <clears throat> that, you know, there's going to be a huge release for you. The Ten of Swords, <clears throat> excuse me, can be kind of a violent ending, um, <clears throat> but it's something that was really toxic, something that was creating a lot of anxiety, a lot that we see here and we heard in this Prince of Swords energy or this Knight of Swords energy um, and this dogma and this sort of nastiness and this uh, confusion and not really being able to move or get where you want to go. You know, because, you know, just because you just keep sort of going in circles. And this Ten of Swords is releasing all of that. So I love the fact that this reading starts off with a Ten of Swords. Ten of Wands ends with the Ten of Swords, both of them in reverse. And there the roosters kicking off saying, yes, ma'am, that's exactly how it is. Release. Now is the time to be innovative. Aquarius is the time to, is the time to detach. So detach from negative people, negative relationships, negative patterns. Wherever you've been abandoning yourself, don't do that any longer. You know, and it's time to move forward. And you and you really have a blessing from spirit here to do so. All right. And with the Four of Wands and the Ace of Cups, it's really, really telling me, you guys, that for a lot of you, it's going to have to do with romance. And especially if you're not expecting it. All right, so just remember, just keep doing the work that you need to do. Stay in your truth, okay? Live your most, live and be your true, authentic self, and your blessings will come to you. All right, lovely. 28 adds up to another 10, so we've got three 10s on deck. This is victory, success. Even though it might not feel like it, or you might feel like there's just a lot of heavy stuff, there might be a multiple endings going on in your life at this time, but, you know, it's going to be, it's a blessing in disguise. Here we have 21 breaking down to a three. Again, I really get that, you know, where we saw that three of pentacles, like you being the architect, you being the planner. Remember, you're the architect of this victory. You're the architect of your life. There's free will. We all always have decisions, right? So when we're granted a blessing, you decide how you're going to deal with it. I also love the feather here because the feather is also a reminder that you're surrounded by your angels and your guides and roosters who don't want to stop crowing or whatever it is they're doing, <laughs> cock-a-doodle doing. All right, but there's a victory at hand. Make sure that you put in the work. Make sure that you do the work and that you do the proper planning. All right, and then and then you've got this blessing and this like immense healing through this ten of swords. I swear he was not he did not make any noise like all morning. And then as soon as I start reading, he's like <laughs> okay. he wants to be heard. All right, but we have to go with it because it's the last like it's the last few readings where we're gonna hear the rooster for a while. Um, before I travel. So again, here we have number 43, the man holding a coin. This is earth energy. Some of you might have Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn in your chart, or I'm also getting the message. This might be a person that you might be meeting. Okay. Who might help you on this journey of healing. And that might be your ace of cups, four of swords energy, right? And the man holding a coin is somebody who's very stable, somebody who's offering financial and emotional stability and something that, you know, I think that a lot of us want and are aspiring to. Okay. So really nice. So I feel like, but I feel like that's the energy that's coming to you. Okay. Like once you've sort of gone through this, this sort of ending and there might be multiple endings, you know, you guys might have sort of feel like it's a run of bad luck. You know, like I lost my job or I get demoted and my boyfriend or girlfriend breaks up with me or and I'm separating, you know, and remember, yes, like when it rains, it pours, but that's oftentimes because we're trapped in a negative vibration. So we're attracting, you know, negative, um, you know, negative energies. But at the same time, you know, spirit is saying, but this is all a blessing, all a huge blessing. Mm -hmm. Additional messages for the collective. 
We have love, number six. So for some of us, again, this is definitely your calling in a soulmate or a twin flame or, or you're taking your relationship to the next level. If you guys are in, in couples or in partnership, you know, it could be the ending of a cycle, you know, where you guys weren't understanding each other, where you weren't talking to each other, where you weren't expressing your truth and what you needed and, and you know, your wants, your needs, your desires and, and what it is you need to keep going in this relationship. Or, you know, maybe it was like things were unbalanced. Maybe somebody wasn't pulling their weight and that can be coming to an end as well. So remember, it doesn't always necessarily mean that this is an ending, you know, because the four of wands could be you guys taking that next step, you know, moving up, you know, getting married, getting engaged, you know, or just, you know, moving up in your relationship. Number six can also represent, you know, self-love, but it's the card of Venus. So I really do feel like there's a real romantic component to this enter, to this reading. And number 63, we have parenting. I love that six and three breaks down to a nine. Nines are about near completion, transitions. We're very, very close. Parenting, for some of you, this, this situation does involve children. Um, for others of you, you know, it's all about, you know, I think there's some issues you might have to, you might have to heal with your own parents. And then also, I think it's also taking care of that inner child and seeing, you know, for those of you that do any sort of work like that, that inner child work is going to really help you heal and taking care of your inner child. And then for others of you, it's simply this situation has to do with your children, okay, or your parents. Final message for the collective. Final message for the collective. Yes, I love it. The winged wise ones, angelic help, miraculous aid, number 34. So you have 34 and you have it mirrored in 43. So those are two sevens, right? And sevens are beautiful. It's about introspection. It's about investment. Um, but seven is also a very highly spiritual number that you're on the correct spiritual path. The winged wise ones is you, you know, miracles coming into your life. And I feel like it has something to do with this man holding a coin that you're either going to receive. And it's connected to this ace of cups, something that's going to bring you so much joy and so much abundance and so much love. And I feel like you're going to not be expecting it. <clears throat> that's the message I keep getting over and over in this reading, that there's going to be something unexpected that happens to you. And it doesn't necessarily have to be today because I feel like this reading is a little bit larger than just one day. But, you know, where a relationship is going to the next level, some of your, your spouse or your partner is going to propose to you or suggest like, you know, a vacation or something that's really going to rekindle things. You're going to meet someone, you know, in a random place or it's going to seem random but there's going to be so much healing and there's it, this might bring about an ending or you might be going through some certain endings here okay you guys this is a really really awesome reading i love it you know there's success here and there's release and there's ending and that's exactly what we want to see we want to see this up leveling we want to go through these transitions you know and so we can you know we can evolve on an emotional and a spiritual level all right, you guys, I love you so much. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, comment, share, ring that bell. And just thank you guys for listening, and I love you, and I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful day.